Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this OSLC community webcast, where we're going to learn about the SAP Connector and how you can join SAP Solution Manager and the IBM CLM suite using OSLC. This was a presentation that I happened to see when I was at IBM Innovate earlier this year, or it's at least a derivative of it, covering some of the same content. I really enjoyed the presentation there. And I thought this was something that would be wonderful for us to see as a community, uh, an OSLC community. And also, I thought it would be a good way for us to reach out and to engage with uh, people who maybe don't participate in OSLC that much or are not so familiar in that the SAP Connector is connecting a whole new suite of software, a new piece of software with rational tools that, that is typically unused or unheard of in OSLC. Our speaker today is Steve Stitsky. He's the architect and the development lead for the IBM Rational Connector for SAP Solutions Manager. He has quite a bit of experience. Uh, one thing I, I certainly find interesting from my own personal uh, point of view is that he was one of the early architects of the X11 windowing system. And I, I don't know whether I should thank Steve for that or or uh, scream at him for it. Anyway, today's talk I think should be very fascinating. We're going to have a chance to take a look at a little bit of the history here, see some of the uh, thoughts and the designs that went into it, and actually then see the, the software working in action and get a little peek as to how this implementation of OSLC helps solve real business problems and is a very valuable uh, addition to the to users of SAP and users of CLM and just anyone who needs to use software to get work done. Now I'm going to transfer control to, to Steve and he will take it from here on. Yeah, I'm uh, trying to start up my uh, connector server just now in the background, so hold on. Bear with me a second. All right. Okay, I'll do that. I'll bring up my sharing. I see your screen. Okay. Hopefully the connector will come up. I was just having problems with it. Party in use. Well, I'm going to reboot the system. I give the main part of the talk here. All right, that should clear up things. In, in your defense, in your defense, at the presentation I saw at Innovate, there was also a little bit of a glitch in the demo. Yes. Come on. So hold on here. Let's check. 
Sorry about this, guys. No. comes to worse, I can play a canned demo and uh, talk over it. Mm. So, but I just want to spend a couple more minutes here. All right, well, well Steve works on that. I'll, um, I'm actually just, uh, I, I noticed that uh, Brian, Brian King, who wrote an article on the, uh, the Jazz Team blog, kind of announcing this uh, this connector for SAP Solution Manager is also on on the line. Um, Brian, I, I don't know if you if you want to. Uh, I, I would actually ask you if you could give some perspective on on what you your team has achieved with this uh, with this release. Especially, I know there was a previous incarnation of the SAP Solution Manager yeah, or uh, sure. uh, uh, the connector. And right. so, what what's so great about this 4.0 release? Right. So, um, so, so you're right. This is actually the second release of it. Um, the first release came out in October of 2011, and um, it was um, basically connecting yep. SAP Solution Manager with um, Rational's RecPro, Rec Pro, um, ClearQuest, and um, uh, Quality Manager, and we um, had planned all along to extend that eventually to um, more of a CLM solution with Rational Team Concert and um, Rational Requirements Composer and heard from a lot of customers that they um, really were excited about that. And so that's um, what we're bringing with this 4.0 uh, release version. Um, and we have used OSLC um, extensively in um, uh, connecting with the, the Rational um, CLM products there. Mm -hmm. So basically here was a, a, an instance of some integration driven by the demand uh, yes. from from clients. Yes, that's a that, that's a really powerful way of uh, of working. I've I've noticed that uh, this is how IBM is driving a lot of, especially through the Jazz uh, initiative, uh, is driving a lot of its new work. And I know this is also how we develop specifications and. And OSLC, by driven by need, by scenarios, by demand, and uh, it's just uh, it's just really wonderful to me to see um, to see that kind of client-centric approach being applied, and then actually putting you know creating things that are useful, whether it be this connector or OSLC specifications, or I mean any number of other things in, inside uh, through Jazz.net. It's actually creating useful stuff coming out of this interaction with the clients often in the open. Uh, I think that that's a really, really positive thing for uh, any clients and for, uh, of course, for IBM as well. It's, it's, it's nice to see that. And it's also nice to see that uh, Steve seems to have his sharing back again. Yeah. And I assume he must be ready, ready to, to go, go here. Yep, and I have the um, I have the connector up and running as well, so we should be able to do the live demo. So, um, as Sean mentioned, this is a, a presentation that uh, Joseph Dare and I did at um, uh, Orlando Innovate. Uh, Joseph Dare it was the main tools SME for uh, Blue Harmony, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, and as uh, Sean mentioned, I'm the uh, Senior Software Engineer and Architect for the IBM Rational Connector for SAP Solution Manager. So um, let's give some background to uh, what the reasons were for creating the connector. Um, Solution Manager is the main development environment, um, plus much, much more for um, SAP packaged apps. Uh, both developing and customizing them, and they have their own ALM solution.
solution that's related um, to developing applications. And probably the people on this call are familiar that um, IBM has an ALM offering CLM as well. So uh, what we wanted to do in terms of um, developing this application, this integration technology, was um, to uh, tie those two together so that customers could get the best of breed on both sides of the development environment. Um, so um, here is some pictorial representation of what the connector does. Um, on the left-hand side, we see Solution Manager, and we're calling out um, four basic sub-applications in that. There's uh, business blueprinting, and for those of you who aren't familiar with SAP, the blueprint artifact is the main um, design document that uh, encapsulates a particular packaged app. So it is organized in terms of um, business process hierarchy, and we'll see an example of that in a little while in the demo. And um, so in that, you encapsulate all of your um, your business uh, system-to-system -system interactions and user-to-system interactions, as well as um, requirements documents, et cetera, to um, describe and uh, develop a packaged app. Then the second application um, is change impact analysis, which is essentially um, a way that given you're making changes to your application, trying to determine what the minimum set of things are that you need to test to verify that the changes you've made are the ones you intended. Then there's project reporting. Uh, SAP Solution Manager has an extensive uh, reporting mechanism uh, with customized reports, um, and we interact we integrate with that. And then finally, there's incident management. And uh, SAP has a uh, sub-application of Solution Manager called Service Desk. And both the um, incidents that are local to a particular end user um, deployment and those incidents that need to be reported back um, to SAP itself are handled via Service Desk Incident Management Facility. On the um, rational side, uh, we have the three CLM applications. There's uh, Rational Requirements Composer, there's Quality Manager, and uh, RTC for Change and Defect Management. Um, so what this does is uh, it allows customers to um, design packaged apps and customize them using both development environments. Um, it enables end-to-end -end business process testing. Um, one of the areas in which SAP is particularly interested, was particularly interested in this, is that um, Quality Manager adds a, um, a level of test management that was not available off the shelf from uh, Solution Manager and it aligns <coughs> enterprise architecture and requirements with SAP-centric solutions. Requirements management is a, is an, a, a growing area of uh, development practice in packaged apps. Traditionally, um, requirements management was not something that Solution Manager and the customers um, used. So moving on to the next slide, um, this gives you some sense of the end-to-end um, application lifecycle management um, SAP solution. And so we'll see that when we're starting um, to develop a package app um, or customize it, you take a business blueprint and uh, design it. Now, uh, typically people buy a package app and then do significant amount of customizations, and every package app that you get from Solution Manager will come with a business blueprint. Um, but um, most people spend more time and money customizing their apps than they do actually in uh, paying licensing fees um, to SAP. So the customization process is a non-trivial thing. Um, having uh, created a business blueprint, you can um, use the connector to 
um, import that blueprint and create test plans and test requirements as well as test cases, um, then you can execute those tests under Rational Quality Manager and um, uh, report the results of the test back into Solution Manager. As I said earlier, Solution Manager has an extensive um, reporting infrastructure. Um, obviously, customers could use the reporting facilities of Rational CLM, but depending on what your role in the project is, if, for example, you're a business analyst working primarily in Solution Manager, then it might make sense to do your reporting there. Um, the, uh, in the course of doing test execution, you might very well encounter problems, uh, in which case you would um, create um, RTC defect work items, and for some subset of them that affect the deployment or the design process, you might create from those defects uh, a service desk incident. So um, let's move on to uh, the next slide, which is some continuation of the original one that we just saw. Um, in addition to direct access to Quality Manager, there are a number of back-end testing uh, infrastructures that uh, can, the customer there after has access to. Um, so you can use System Analyzer. Uh, did somebody go on mute? I, I'm hearing a lot of noise here. Yeah, someone is playing a TV or something. Gotten a little quiet. Uh, Sean, can you do a star stick to mute everyone? And then just uh, unmute Steve. There, that's better. Okay. Can you hear me now, Sean? Yes, I can. Okay. So um, uh, you can do automated GUI testing with Certify. You can do load and stress testing in Performance Tester. You can do integration testing in Green Hat and security testing in AppScan. All of those test results uh, would then be um, organized within Rational Quality Manager and uh, shipped back to Solution Manager for reporting in that context, if that makes sense in terms of your work process. So here is another representation of the process flow um, that I just described. It gives you a better sense of the connections between the applications. So uh, you, as I said, uh, excuse me, uh, um, you uh, create a specification, transfer the blueprint to create requirements in RRC, and create test plans and test cases. Um, the uh, light blue arrows indicate manual steps. From the test plan and test cases, you can create test scripts. You can execute those tests and display the test results back in Solution Manager. And when problems occur, you can create work items and for some subset of them, export them back um, to become SAP incidents. And we'll show examples of this in the demo that in a few minutes. And again, uh, the, the integration is bi-directional, so uh, there might be some incidents like uh, adding a new, new um, facility to uh, your packaged app that would require an incident to be created directly in Service Desk, and some subset of them are going to have downstream impacts in in the rational tools, so it's possible to take an incident and create a work item from it. Um, the, uh, uh, oops, let me uh, go to do not disturb mode. Okay, uh, once the uh, incidents are linked to 
um, a work item, uh, there are OSLC links that allow you to do all of the OSLC operations, um, give a preview of an incident within uh, an, a CLM application, um, navigate from uh, the incident to the work item or vice versa. So, so let's talk about the history of uh, the um, connector. Blue Harmony, uh, for those who don't know, is the internal deployment of SAP packaged apps. It uh, is a huge project. Um, as it shows here on the slide, it it's, was originally planned to be five years, but it's looking more like it's going to be an eight-year project. It spans the 170 countries that IBM is, uh, does business in, and it's the largest single deployment of SAP packaged apps. As part of this um, process of rolling out SAP in the IBM back office, um, SAP and IBM have developed a strategic partnership to uh, work together to help their customers. Um, and uh, uh, the connector came out of that. So, um, about four years ago now, um, the uh, when they were doing the initial rollout of SAP managed apps, they realized that they needed a test management facility and decided um, to develop a custom connector at that point um, uh, for Blue Harmony. Um, the uh, resulting work was so successful that um, several years ago, about two and a half at this point, they uh, agreed jointly to commercialize that connector um, and uh, as Brian mentioned a few minutes ago, the 1.0 connector was released last year in September, and uh, the 4.0 um, product was released shortly after Innovate and moved to support both RRC and RTC. Previously to that, and still, um, the connector supported uh, ClearQuest and RecPro, but um, in terms of our long-term strategic vision, we wanted to also support RRC and RTC. Um, the uh, use of the connector at Blue Harmony has been quite successful. There's a massive uh, set of blueprints that cover um, all of the package apps that um, IBM is deploying, and you can see that uh, there have been uh, almost 20,000 test cases uh, developed and 20,000 requirements. Um, and uh, there were 501 test plans, and we're up to about 60,000 test execution results. All of this is managed by the connector. So at this point, we'll uh, go for the demo. So first what I'd like to do is uh, bring up the um, GUI for um, SAP Solution Manager. So um, the first step in uh, developing a pack adapt, as I mentioned, is creating a blueprint. Um, and uh, the way that you do that is with an application called Solar01. So um, if this will complete in a minute or, or a moment or two. It's reading the hierarchy of the blueprint and uh, will develop a um, – show a representation of the blueprint on the screen. Um, I haven't used our instance of Solution Manager here in a day or so, so it's starting up on the server right now. And while we're waiting for that, let's go and see. Um, I've created uh, a couple of projects. Um, CLM enterprise uh, projects called new project and um, ongoing project. And at this point, um, there are no artifacts inside of RC as you'll see here. Um, 
So um, what we're going to do is push the blueprint and create requirements and um, uh, test plans. And here is the uh, quality manager project that corresponds to um, that. So um, if we go back to Solo, and here's an example, fairly simple blueprint, and you can see that um, it's organized in terms of business process hierarchy. At the top, you have um, business scenarios. Um, below that, you have business processes. Below that, you have uh, business process steps. And then um, within those, you have transactions and um, uh, requirements documents. So uh, you can see that there are a number of sample transactions, create purchase order. Um, et cetera. Um, while you're in this application, you can um, specify specifically what objects get transferred to the rational tool set. And here you can see that there are a number of business requirements and test objects which correspond to um, uh, business cases. So um, at this point, I want to just show you um, Why is that? Um, so this is the administrative GUI of Canary. So one of the things that you can configure is what the mapping is between uh, uh, blueprint artifacts and rational artifacts. And this is the default mapping that we're showing here. So in this case, uh, when we export the blueprint, um, we'll create a test plan from every business scenario We'll create a test case from every test object, and we'll create um, a, a requirement, an RRC requirement for every business requirement. But we um, uh, could have, um, for example, if you had a very complicated blueprint, uh, change this so that um, there's a test plan created for every business process step. We're not going to do that for the moment. Um, so let's go back to here. And at this point, what we're going to do is push the blueprint to export it to a national project. So um, here is all of the nodes in the um, blueprint that have uh, artifacts on the transfer to IBM Rational Project, and it's going to create the artifacts that would, we just saw. So let's start this push. We'll run in the background. It's uh, in the blueprint hierarchy, and now it's sending the data to uh, Rational Quality Manager and RRC. This should take a moment or two. Now, um, while we're waiting for this, um, what you'll see when we get there is that it creates um, within RRC a folder structure that maps to the business process hierarchy. And similarly, in RQM, it will create a um, category structure that, and with nested categories that correspond to that. So here we've seen that the delayed data has been transferred. So let's bring up RQM and RRC. And refresh our RC here. Hmm. What's going on here? Oh, actually. oh sorry, I pushed the wrong project. There's, uh, I've set up two projects here. And we'll just go through the quick step.
these are very similar projects, um, but I just wanted to show an initial project creation. Okay, let's go back to here, and now we see some data. Okay, so there's a uh, folder that corresponds to the, um, the project itself, and then um, we can tunnel down to, let's make this a little wider. And you'll see that um, there are a number of requirements that have been created from that. If we examine one of them, sample doc. you'll see that there are two links here. One goes to the sample document inside of Solution Manager. So we don't actually transfer <coughs> the document. Instead, what we do is we create a hyperlink back to Solution Manager to the document. There, logging into and here is that uh, very simple document that we were looking at. Uh, similarly, it, because there's an associated test object with it, um, we can see see that um, there's a test case created from the test object that um, uh, validates the requirement. So let's go and look at that. We're still loading. So, um, in this, we can see all the data that was in this object. If we go in um, here, I don't know where it is. So um, this is the transaction that we we're just looking at. Automatic generation POs. Oh, I don't see it actually. Um, in any case, um, and if we go to uh, look at all the test plans, There has been one created, a master test plan that corresponds to the blueprint, and one for the top level scenario. And if we look at the test cases associated with this, we can see that. Uh, there's been a test case for each test object that was created. So um, what I want to show at this point is how we get test results back. So if we create a business um, test suite, and we associate some cases with it. And you'll see they have a 
hierarchy that's associated with that. The same hierarchy. And let's select both of these. Add them to our suite. And in order to execute these, we'd normally create test suites, but what I'm going to do is, um, for the sake of simplicity, create a couple of test suites. Save this. Okay, so we've created two failed test results. So let's show how we can push these back. Normally what you would do is when you associate projects in Solution Manager to CLM projects is that you would create a background script that every half hour to an hour would push the results back. But since this was a newly created project, we'll do it annually. So we're looking at new projects. And we go to the Solution Manager tab up here and we report the test results. So now we can go to um, the uh, reporting application called Solar Eval. of reports, but what we're interested in is the results from testing with IBM Rational Quality Manager. And uh, it's already pre-selected Deep Test 01, which is the Solution Manager project. Um, and if we execute this result, this report, it should show what we created um, test results. Okay, so here is a simple report that's showing that um, <clears throat> we created these results today. Both of them failed, but the interesting thing about this is that this is a completely interactive report, so we can drill down into uh, either the test suite or um, go to the level of even down to the test result. Now, for the sake of this demonstration, let's assume that we want to report an error for this. So um, we'll just create a quick error defect. Systems being 
a little pokey today. And save this. So if we open up this defect now, um, let's assume that um, it was based upon a problem that we know originated from Solution Manager and we want to create an incident based on this. So if we go to the Links tab, uh, what we've done is we've implemented uh, incident uh, service desk as a OSLC provider. As related change requests. And we can create a new service desk incident from this. Whatever comes up. It never fails, but that uh, things run slowly. Fill in the required fields. Um, we'll just pick that. Text type is description, give it a high priority. And what's happening now is it's calling through the connector out to service desk um, and creating a uh, um, a new incident. Give it a second. Brian, my boss, has assured me that we're getting new hardware, which is more powerful. Um, so this should, in future cases, run a little, little quicker. At the moment, we're running on s several underpowered VMs. Let's leave that running. And maybe go back to our presentation. I, um, in a second, we'll show you the result of that, but I want to talk a little bit about the implementation architecture for the connector and uh, what the technologies we used here and what the development process and testing process was. So um, the IBM Rational Connector is um, implemented as a um, generic JEE web application, which will run in either WebSphere or Tomcat. By default, if you install it, it um, uh, will deploy its own Tomcat server. Um, at the level of interacting with Solution Manager, it talks to the Solution Manager application server, ABAP, and communicates via uh, SOAP web services. Um, those uh, interactions um, are in both directions. So the ABAP can um, connect to the connector as a client and uh, connect to the connector, uh, the connector in that case serving as a server 
for web services requests, and vice versa. The connector can act as the client to ABAP, um, uh, fronting the solution manager. In order to secure those applications, we're using SAML, um, the security um, uh, standard uh, that uh, SAP requires. Uh, it's a pluggable web-based architecture which allows us to use multiple, um, support multiple rational projects. On the um, back end of the connector, we have implemented um, integrations with the five applications that you're seeing here, and except for uh, RecPro, we use, we act as OSLC clients uh, to all of these applications. Um, and for the integration with RTC, uh, the connector implements the CM interface to make, uh, to uh, present service desk incidents as change management requests. Speaking of which, let's Back and check and see if this is done. No, oh, it's still running. Um, uh, the uh, in the back end of our QM, as we talked about earlier, there are a number of adapters that you can use to uh, do your testing. Um, and on the solution manager side, we were only using two of the sub applications for the moment, um, the blueprint uh, processing application and service. Now, um, the, uh, the way that we develop the web services is by developing jointly with SAP a web services protocol based upon WSDL, and we use um, the Access uh, 2 technology um, to generate Java uh, stubs and proxies um, within the, um, the connector to implement and be a client for the web services. We've um, uh, used an agile process to develop this, primarily uh, the scrum process um, and uh, test-based development. So for every major piece of functionality and many of the minor ones, we created the tests for the functionality within the connector before we developed the actual application. Um, all of this was done using RTC um, uh, and uh, Rational Application Developer. Hopefully this is done now. Ah, this is really running slowly. Okay, uh, at this point what I want to do is open up the discussion for any questions. Can you uh, take people off mute, Sean? Yes, if you're dialed into the phone, you should be able to just speak up. If you are listening through the audio cast, you can type your questions into the chat box, which is the third tab from the left or the rightmost tab in the participants list. bring up the chat in case there's anything I can see. Um, nope. Okay. Um, so, so this has um, this has been deployed and used internally at IBM quite extensively mm -hmm. uh, with a large installation. Um, so, so in spite of in spite of the uh, the slowness that uh, that your underpowered VM is having, this this has been proven to this is a solution that's been proven to scale nicely. Yes. Is that, is that right? Yes. So, um, have have we seen have we seen yet any uh, interest or uptake now that it's available as a product? I know it's very early. It was just recently announced, but uh, well, there've been a number of downloads, um, yeah. and um, I'm actually uh, have been involved with the sales force both within and outside of uh, the pr company to um, present this solution to customers. But I don't believe uh, there's been any adoption per se. 
in the field mm-hmm. yet, other than that blue harmony. Yep. Right. Um, Sean, this is Brian. Let, let me add, too, that this is based on Solution Manager 7.1, mm-hmm. uh, which also just recently came out last year. It is a pretty big jump for a lot of SAP customers. And so what we're expecting is um, we'll see some kick, kicking the tires within the next few weeks, and then we'll start to see more and more adoption as mm-hmm. customers move up to Solution Manager 7.1 as well as CLM4. Right. And, yeah, that's that's potentially two big moves to get here. I guess one nice thing that uh, anyone who's going to look at the solution, uh, one nice advantage or is actually the the huge use of deployment on the Blue Harmony project. Yes. Yeah. Uh, even though it's a whole lot of new capabilities, it's uh, it's proven. I'm just looking to see if something happened with my connector server. No, it's still running. I don't understand why this is taking so long. Um, we had a, um, beta programs for uh, um, uh, release one and release four of the connector and uh, a number of customers who um, were very excited to use it, including GBS. Um, GBS uh, is one of the main um, uh, system integrators for uh, SAP packaged DAPs, um, and uh, I don't think I would probably be allowed to mention the names of the other mm-hmm. participants in the beta process. Yeah, that's uh, that's great. I I uh, I found it uh, just when you were showing the interactive report. I was I was just thinking of how how valuable even that on its own. Yes, and how much time it saves is trying to saves you from trying to do manual uh, cross referencing and reconciliation. Right. Uh, and uh, that's that's enabled by all the work that went into the version four. So I, think, I thought even that on its own would be really, really handy. Okay. I have no idea what's going on here. Well, I'll have to check into this after the meeting. Mm-hmm. So there's always glitches in uh, live demos, I guess. Yeah. Well, all the same glitches and everything aside, I, I think this gave us some a really a nice picture of what is possible and uh, hopefully ha- helped everyone who has attended and is going to watch the video on YouTube to get those wheels turning as to how this is going to help them solve their real problems and uh, and make their you know their daily life or the daily life of any of their clients that much better so uh, thank you very much Steve you're welcome now if you would stop sharing and and pass back to control to me just before we conclude this meeting I did want to uh, take the chance to promote the the next webcast that we have scheduled and and maybe it is targeting a slightly different audience because it's actually going to be about OSLC access and debugging using your browser. So if you're <laughs> if you were if you were interested in the in the SAP demo today, maybe that one is one you want to pass on to a, a colleague or a friend who who you work with. But this should be a, a really valuable topic as uh, there's actually a lot you can do just using uh, your everyday web browser in order to understand what is happening with the with the OSLC integrations that are putting your products together. So we have um, Mike Fiedler who is the Eclipse Leo co-lead and has been doing a lot of work helping anyone and everyone who's implementing OSLC to do so with a lot less pain. Hopefully some of the tricks and uh, tips and techniques that he's going to show in this webcast will will make that uh, life even easier after that. So you can already go and register for this. It's another uh, Smart Cloud event. And just in case you want to collect the link, I'm going to paste that in to the, to the chat for t- today. And given that, as I've uh, thanked uh, Brian already, I th- would like to thank everyone else who attended this uh, 
this webcast. If you have ideas for webcast topics, would like to present a webcast of some work that you've done or a client of yours has done, you can certainly just go ahead and contact me or the OSLC Communications Work Group. We have a, uh, a schedule stretching out quite a ways, but there's always a chance to fit in more. And uh, even if you think it's something that you might want to present, you know, even into 2013, uh, talk to us now and uh, we can start laying the ground. Thanks again, everyone, and have a great day.